don't know if the camera caught that part, but I'm gonna read that scripture again, man. Read that precept again. Also have to read an article. I gotta read that scripture. Matthew 21, verse 16. Right? So like I said, we all gotta be coming babes in order to enter the kingdom of the Most High. Because that's who the Most High revealed the secrets to. Matthew 21, verse 16. And he said unto them, and he said it, and he said unto him, Herod's doubt, we saw from 16, 15. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the, the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, of David, blessed be the rock, they were sore displeased. And said unto him, Harris thou what he say? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Wait. Have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and suckers? Thou hast perfected praise. And also goes with Psalms the eighth chapter. I tell you that the Pharisees and Sadducees, they heard not knowing the scriptures. And they were supposed to be the leaders of the people. That's why the scripture says, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Because you're so-called leader of Israel, of you Negro, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're supposed to be out here, man. All right, you got to show your face, man. You're supposed to be on the front line, man. Isaiah 9 and 16. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Okay, that's what the scripture says. Judah mourned and their gates there are language. Their gates are their leaders because that's where the leaders were at. They were at the gates of the city. Matter of fact, let me see if I can prove that in the law, man. So the Most High is raising up what? Young men, man. All right? Because these so-called leaders failed us, man. Like I said, the our apostles, they came into this as young men. All right? Let me get, uh... Let me get the elders at the city gate. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Judges and officers, thou shalt make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy power giveth thee, throughout all thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. So there you go. So the scripture says, our gates language. Okay? Meaning what? Your leaders, man. Okay? But the Most High is raising us up, man. That's why the scripture says, the book of Joel, flown in the spirit. Alright? Flown in the spirit of Yahweh Bashin Yahushua, man. Let you know that America is going to be destroyed, man. Alright? Joel chapter 3. And the Most High is raising up the elect of the 12 tribes, man, of you Negroes, Hispanics, you Native American Indians. The elect of you, okay? Two thirds, you're going to die right along with the devil Esau, so called white man, man, okay? Because he's on his way out, man. All right, his kingdom is full of perils, okay? And he's at odds with everybody. Because he's the wicked that's being revealed in the last time, man. Yeah, all they, all you, all you, see what I'm saying? The man of sin has been revealed, man. Right? Read on. 
Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, verse 6. The children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All right? Have ye sold? No. Have ye sold unto the Grecians, the Edomites, man? The Bible is fair as day, man. All right? That he might even remove them far from their border, our land of Jerusalem. All right? And we also got sold off the north, mainly off the what? The west coast of Africa and North Africa, different parts of the world. Now, the first crop of slaves came from Spain, man. The Moors that got taken down, which they were Negroes, man, Israelites. Okay? So we were everywhere, man, and our seed is everywhere. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where they have sold them, which is America. So the Most High said he's raising us up, man. Raising up what? The tabernacle of David. It's a spiritual temple, man. Okay, they're talking about they're going to build the third temple in the land of Jerusalem, that cursed land. That land going to get blown to hell and back in this third world's war. Okay? There ain't going to be no third temple built. The third temple is the elect, man. And that proves to you that the so-called Jew is not a spiritual man. He's carnal, man. All right? It says, Behold, I will raise them out of the place where they have sold them, and will turn your recompense unto your own head. So Most High is going to pay the so-called white man back for all the evils that he has done on the planet Earth and what he has done to the Heavenly Father's people, man. His children, man. You're going to have to pay for all that, man. All that blood is on your head. Okay? What you going to do about that, you know? You ain't going to do a damn thing. You're going to drink that cup, man. And you're going to drink all of it. And that cup is called destruction and then slavery. And whatever evil you can imagine is going to happen to you. And ain't none of you devils gonna escape. Because why? You're gonna die on this side. You're gonna be born back in the kingdom of the Most High. You're gonna be born back in your rightful place as the beast and degenerate, degenerate, godless heathen that you are, man. With a big chain, fat chain around your neck, man. Okay? Walking on all fours. <laughs> that's, that's the state you're gonna be. A real low state, man. The scripture says you're the children of fools, the children of base men. Okay? And like Job said, now I've become their song. We represent Job. And you have become their song. Alright? That's all you niggas are good for entertainment anyway, man. Making these, these idiotic, um, stupid ass songs. Okay? Just a laughing stock, man. But like King David said, how, matter of fact, let me read Psalms 137. Psalms 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. There we wept when we remembered Zion, our, our homeland, man, Jerusalem. We hanged our hearts upon the willows in the midst thereof. This happened in slavery. But then they carried us captive, required of us a song. You see? Sing that song for me, boy. That's what Esau used to say in slavery. And that's where all that cooning and dancing in church come from, man. All right, it says, and they wasted us, required us of mirth, saying, sing us one of them songs of Zion. Okay? Even the Benjamites have a song called, what, the Rivers of Babylon, man, that we sat down. It says, Benjamin Raven as a wolf, man. Okay? Which is my particular tribe, man. Okay, it says, uh, how should we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Yes. Yeah. That strange land is Babylon, man. I'll show you that King David was a prophet, man. Because this is a prophecy, man. Because Israel wasn't in a strange land when David was on, on the scene. Okay? It says, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. This is what King David said. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise and raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, so he also is referring to what? Not ancient Babylon. The scripture says, The daughter of Babylon, America, man. Who ought to be destroyed? So all the prophets talk about Babylon being destroyed. And we in that time, man. Okay? The Heavenly 
Father's greatest works is about to come to pass. His greatest masterpiece is going to be Babylon's America nuclear demise, man. And King David said it. We read it on. O daughter Babylon, America, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taken and dash thy little ones, your children, against the stone. That's what happened in the kingdom. You're going to be showing no mercy. What happened to us, you're going to receive double. Right? And any of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and you native Indians can't get down with that, you also going to taste that. Okay? Like how was shy said, Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Bringing this word out, man. If this word got to be exalted, man. Whether you wicked niggas here or not. It says Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Because two-thirds you ain't right, man. And y'all don't want the salvation or did this deliverance to come to pass. So the Most High got exterminate you, man. What good are you if you're not serving the Most High? Okay? Matthew 12 and 30. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He that is not with me is against me. I'm going to read that again. So there's no middle ground with the Messiah. If you're an Israelite and you don't accept Yahweh Shai, you automatically going to get put to death. Point blank, period. He said what? He that's not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Okay, these other wayward camps. Okay? Teaching in another name. Teaching another strange doctrine. You're not gathering the lost sheep, man. You're scattering them, man. Because you're teaching lies, man. Okay? And that's called what? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You took the good book, the word, and you perverted it, man. I just did that video on the Panthers. They ain't come through the straight gate, man. You gotta come through the straight gate, man. Okay? If you don't come through the straight gate, the whole tide's gonna destroy you, man. Alright? Matter of fact, let me read the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, I believe it's the fifth chapter. Wisdom is solid. You know, like I said, I also got this article I have to read. Solomon in the fifth chapter. Going to Solomon, many parables. Man. And most people don't even understand wisdom of Solomon. They think it's talking about some woman. That's Israel's relationship with the Most High. It's a parable. Man. Solomon was known for bringing them parables out, man, them deep parables. Man. get the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 no not wisdom of Solomon song of Solomon and this is a song we're singing as well the song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1 I come into the garden of my sister my spouse I gathered my myrrh with my spice, I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, and I have drunk my wine with my milk, eat 
O oh friends, drink ye, drink abundantly, O oh beloved. What's he talking about? Got it right here. That's why the scripture says, uh, which we know the wine and the milk is the word. And also honey as well. It tells you that in Psalms, I think, uh, Psalms chapter 19. Get that precept. I read that too long. He David said, "Um, he said that words are sweeter than a honeycomb." I believe it's Psalm 19. It goes Psalm chapter 19, verse. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. There's also one in Proverbs. He goes into, uh, might be Solomon too. Where he goes into honey. That word is sweeter than honey. I can't find it, but that's what he's talking about, a song of song. Right. We read on, it says, which we know the wine. It says you can't put new wine in old bottles. Now. And we know the milk is the word. Isaiah 28 and 11. Right, that's what scripture says, as newborn babes desire that milk that you may grow thereby. First of all, it says, I sleep. But my heart wakes me. It is the voice of my beloved that I can sing. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my uncle child. For my head is filled with dew, and my lock is drunk with night. I put up my coat. How shall I put it on? I wash my feet. How shall I defile them? Read on down to the point. Verse 7. Verse 6. I open to my beloved, but my beloved hath withdrawn himself. He's gone. My soul failed when he spake. I saw him. I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchman that went about the city found me. Who the watchman? We are, man. Okay? And who's the her we were pitch? You Israelites. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge your daughters of the roof. If you find my beloved, that he tell me that I'm sick of love. So who the watchman that rebuke him? The Israelites, man. I mean the, the watchman, the prophets, man. Okay? And who's the her? Jeremiah 3 point. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Turn, O backslided children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Ah, oh, because he established the first covenant by the hand of Moses. The law, statutes, and commandments that he gave to our people. Obviously, we broke the commandments. That's what he telling you to turn back through it through Yahweh Shai. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. I will make you one of a city and two of a family and bring you to Zion. Only one of a city and two of a family, which is called the elect, man. Only a small number gonna return. Alright? Okay? Mosai said he's married unto you. That's the watchman that rebuked the woman. Okay? That's what we're set up to do, man. That's why the scripture says, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17. What are rebuking you on? Your sins. What sin? Transgression of the law. Okay? And our people, they openly break the laws of the Most High. Like it's the Sabbath right now. And you got Jake. You know, obviously you got to work in captivity. That's obvious. And certain things you have to do. But they doing all kind of pleasurable things on the Sabbath. Man. Yeah, which the new moon fell on a Saturday. 
So the Saturday, this time it's from Friday to Saturday. This time, okay? You're supposed to be honoring the Sabbath to the best of your ability, man. But Jink don't even keep the Sabbath. And you wonder why the Heavenly Father don't listen to your prayers, man? Come on, man. Because you got no care for His commandments, man. That's why, matter of fact, we we'll change zones a bit. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 21. We're supposed to try to keep that Sabbath to the best of all of us, man. Yeah, we all can do better. Jeremiah 17, 21. It says, Jeremiah 17, verse 21. Let's start from verse 20. And they say unto them, Yea, hear ye the word of the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that enter in by these gates. Thus saith Yahweh, Shemiah, Shai, take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, man. And this is where we were in our own land, Jake wasn't keeping the Sabbath, man. This is a day of rest. Shabbat. Nor bring in the gates of Jerusalem, neither carry forth a burden, burden out of the houses on the Sabbath day, neither do any work, but hallow the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff that they might not hear nor receive instruction. That's what our people do. That's why the watchman, like Solomon said, rebuke the woman, man. Okay? And that's what we're set up to do, man. Not an honor. And yes, they were keeping the Sabbath, but you bugged out Christians in the New Testament. Man. Just like how I give a better uh, understanding on the Sabbath, man. That man wasn't created for the Sabbath. Sabbath was created for man. Right, let me read this next precept. Acts chapter 13, verse 42. This further proves that we're keeping the Sabbath day. That's never done away with. That's a part of the Ten Commandments. You know? And they skip over that one. You, you Jake's a hypocrite, man. That's what the Heavenly Father said he's going to send the Assyrians against a hypocritical nation. You guys are hypocrites, man. You're actors, man. You got the biggest Bible, but you don't keep none of the laws. Acts chapter 13, verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So they were keeping the Sabbath, the Gentiles, the Israelites who just came in. Alright? So yes, the Sabbath is important, man. The Spirit got me going everywhere. Okay? The commandments are important, man. It was never done away with. That's a Christian lie and a Christian faith. Alright? That's why I said Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. And the law that endureth forever. So the law endures forever, man. The Heavenly Father's law is never going to be done away with. Man. And they don't teach the law in any of these so-called Christian churches. Man. They teach that that whole thing is done away with, man. Well, we're going to read it now. Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. You're not going to be saved based on the law. You're going to be saved based on your faith. the commandments of the Most High and the law that endured forever. So the law 
law enforcement ever. They that keep it shall come to life, but such as keep it shall die. Yo, that's why I said Revelation 22. So the commandments are is important, right? You're not gonna get your salvation based on the law. It's a, it's a part of the doctrine. See? And Jake and obviously they ain't keeping the commandments because number one I just mentioned is the Sabbath day. And they out here doing a folly, man. They're not observing the Sabbath, man. They don't even care about the Heavenly Father. The Most High is not even in your thoughts, man. But when all hell breaks loose, when you see your children dying in the streets of hunger, or getting gunned down by Gurkha troopers, okay, or getting raped in front of you, okay, and people going from house to house killing you, then you're going to cry to the Heavenly Father, man. But he had his watchmen out here to warn you simpletons, man. Okay, but you're not going to take heed. Let me read on. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. <laughs> Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, which we're coming back into. All right? But your shy also means that tree of life. And may enter into the gate, into the city, which is the kingdom. Okay? And ultimately, that's the ultimate rest. Matter of fact, let's get it, man. Hebrews chapter 1. The Sabbath is a day of rest. We're looking for that ultimate rest. We get the book of Hebrews. And I'm going to get to this article, Lord willing. And I'm saying that another attack is imminent. Right, which we already know. We don't know exactly when, but we know it's soon. Is it this year, Lord willing? Definitely next year, man. Because the elites, they want the New World Order yesterday. They want it now, man. They're not trying to wait another 10, 5 more years to bring forth their plans. They want this thing now, man. That's the reason why they put Trump in there to begin with, is to get the ball rolling. The Obama wasn't moving fast enough. So they had to bring the devil Esau. All right.
mean, did a generation that was created in vain. It says, um, though we believe to enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, that they shall enter in my rest, I though the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So the most I got everything mapped out from the foundation of the world. The only thing you got to do is endure. For well, he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, like I just went into the Sabbath. And the Most High did rest the seventh day from all his works. And this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remained that some entered therein, and to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Okay? And the scripture says what? If you don't believe. Matter of fact, let me get revelation. This goes off of guys who fell out, man. Revelation chapter 16. Bringing out the scriptures of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, man. We just bringing the word out. Okay, this ain't about no entertainment. Okay, because that's all people want to see, man. You curse random people out. Okay, that brings a lot of views. We don't care about that, man. The people that's looking for that, that means they're not sincere. Alright? Just bringing the word out like the apostle said, just bring the word out, man. Okay? When we speak, we speak in general. Don't just be calling on people out, random people. Let the word do the talking and the cutting. Okay? This is 2018, man. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. What a watchman. What are we watching for? The signs. Okay? That's going to lead to the Messiah coming back. Blessed is he. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Which is the entire truth. Alright? We're going to read on. Blessed is he that keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Which is symbolic. Just like when it says Adam was naked in the garden, it don't mean he was physically naked. He lost the truth, man. He sinned against the Most High, man. His shame was seen. That's what that's talking about, man. Just like the scripture also says, Aaron made the children of Israel naked before the Lord. Which is why he caused Israel to go off into idolatry, man. And worshiping other gods, man. Alright? You gotta keep your garments, man. Hold on to what you have, man. Like the scripture says, let me get to Isaiah 59, 17. Let me get Matthew 22. Matter of fact, now, let me get that Aaron made the children of Israel naked. I can't remember where that scripture's at. I'm gonna see if I bring it out from the spirit. It's 3225. Gotta get that. chapter 32 verse 25 
19. Exodus 32, 19. That's when they're making a golden cat. The point is in 25. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burned it in fire, and ground it to powder, and destroyed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. <laughs> you know, Moses was a <laughs> Oh, man. It says, um, and Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought such a great sin upon them? Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, that they are set of mischief. Set on mischief. Yeah, man. That's Jake for you, man. Screw says, You're wise to do evil. But when it comes to good, you have no understanding. And they just saw the miracles, what the Most High just did. They still were doing it evil, man. That's why two thirds gotta go. But they said unto him, Make us gods who shall go before us. Whereas this Moses the man hath brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we were not what has become of him. I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. For they gave it to me, and I cast it unto the, the fire. And they came out of this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, okay, for Aaron had made them naked unto their statue among their enemies. So they what? They sinned, man. Okay? They weren't just walking around with no clothes on. Naked means what? They sinned before Yahweh Bashim al That's why the scripture says, especially you guys who fall out, Matthew 22. And after this segment, Lord Will, we're going to that article, man. You know, more terror is coming, man. More terror coming on this earth, man. We all got to get ready. And Esau likes to do things in a fall time. First Great Depression was in October. Then the one in 1987 was September. Last one, 2008 was in September. 9-11 was in September. So we got to be on our guard, man. They're saying that something may happen before the midterm election. We don't know. But as watchmen, we're going to keep looking out. Right? chapter 22 verse 9 go we therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage what's the marriage read revelation of 21st chapter which is the elect joining with who the bridegroom Yahweh Shai and he's gonna bring us back to the father man okay that's the marriage man that's when we're gonna get that new body and that new covenant is gonna be fulfilled okay that contract is gonna be fulfilled man all right, so you're supposed to come out to the highways and hedges, the chief place of concourse where people are at, as we just read. Go we therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find bids the marriage. So these servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as were found, both bad and good, and the wedding was finished, furnished with guests. And when the king came in, Yahweh Shai, to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on his wedding garment, which is the truth. I, mean, I just read that Revelation 16. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. You're going to die in that nuclear destruction, man. That's when you guys who took your hand off the plow. You're naked in the eyes of the Lord, man. It says what? And they shall be weeping and gnashing the teeth, man. Okay? So he didn't have on his, his wedding garment. He didn't have what? The entire truth. Alright, that's why Isaiah said what? Let me get to Isaiah 59. Okay? 
Going into the parables, man. Isaiah 59, verse 17. Get another one actually. Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh Shimyal Shah. My soul shall be joyful in my power. For you have clothed me with the garments of salvation. That's what it's about. Alright? You have covered me with the robe of righteousness and commandments. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels, man. It's a symbolic. That's linking precept with precept, man. And we're able to do that through the the, 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 the Holy Spirit. See, Hawashah has to give you the spirit to understand this book, to 